Hello friends, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am all about the absolutely adorable Zoo Crew Suite from the Stampin' Up! 2023-2024 annual catalog. Now this suite has something for everybody. Even if you're, you don't have littles to make cards for, oh my goodness, the characters in this suite are so cute and so fun that any age will love them. And the best part is that it features images and activities that cover the full gamut of hobbies and interests for just about anyone. So I'm going to showcase the DSP today. I'm going to show you the uh, bundle and the coordinating ribbon, and then we're going to make three projects. Um, I'm going to show you a bunch more projects, and I'm going to tell you all about some great ways to save some money starting tomorrow. So I'm going to actually do that first. Um, so tomorrow... If you, in case you haven't heard, Stampin' Up! is doing a free shipping flash sale. So one day only, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, June 21st, 2023, uh, you can get your order shipped for free if your order is $100 or more if you live in Canada. Now, the best part about this is that we are also having a designer series paper sale right now. So several of the beautiful designer series papers in the annual catalog are on sale this month for 15% off. So you can get your discounted DSP and get it shipped for free tomorrow only. Plus, if your order hits $60 um, or $120 or $180, um, you get a free set of, of Stampin' Blinds through my Anna birthday month promotion. So that is still running. My birthday is actually coming up this Sunday. So the promotion ends at midnight on Sunday. So tomorrow only you can get discounted DSP, free Stampin' Blinds, and when your order exceeds $100 Canadian, you can get it shipped for free. Now, if your order isn't going to be $100 Canadian and you still want to get in on the free shipping, you can send your order directly to me and I will combine it uh, with a group order and save you the shipping, even if your order is less than $100. But you're going to want to make sure it hits 60 so you get your free stamp of blends, right? So tomorrow is the perfect storm of deals and you're going to want to take advantage of it. Just tomorrow only. This doesn't happen very often that we have three, well... Two plus my own promotion all sort of colliding on the same day. All right, let's pull up my video here so I can see who I'm talking to. See who is watching. There it is. All right, who we got? We got Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Laura. Hi, Krista. Thanks for the happy early birthday wishes, Krista. Um, yes, so let's get to some stamping. I'm going to flip my camera. I have so many things to show you. Um, so many projects. You're going to want to stick around right till the end of the video because I have a whole bunch more projects to share with you. I've had so much fun playing with this suite. I've kind of gone overboard. You'll see. Anyway, uh, let's, let's do the flipperoo and we are going to get to some stamping. Here we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's make sure that's centered. Okay, so Zoo Crew Suite in the annual catalog, page 4647, if you have your catalog handy. And um, this, you can get the whole suite, which includes the designer paper, uh, the bundle with the stamp set and dies, and the coordinating ribbon for $108 in Canada. Now, I need to clarify, if you want to take advantage of the designer series paper sale, you're not going to want to use the suite collection item number. You're going to want to enter your items individually so that you get your discount on the DSP. Okay, that's just a little tip um, so that you don't miss out on your, your extra discount on the designer series paper. All right, so fantastic suite. Let's look at it up close and personal here. So of course we have our bundle, which is the anchor of every product suite. Um, this one is a stamp and die bundle, just fantastic dies. So let's talk stamp set first, actually. So cute, cute, cute little characters. So we've got a ballerina, we've got a raccoon with balloons, we've got a little skunk with some binoculars, looks like he's bird watching. Love this little singing turtle, he's my fave. Uh, we've got a knitting llama and we've got a crocodile on a bicycle, super fun. And of course we have coordinating dies. So so the open dies cut out the stamped images and the images in the DSP, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, we also have this fun die, which actually cuts a curtain so you can set up a stage scene. You'll see that today as well. Um, this is a scalloped edge die, which you can use to cut the top of your the valance on the curtain or just a cute little scallop border. 
these I actually had to like take a really good hard look at those these are actually the tie backs for the curtain you're gonna see that like Stampin' Up thinks of everything so many little details in their die sets and then of course we have extra little accessories for our characters we got some trees and flowers and balloons and then a cute little banner die that fits two out of the three sentiments so really cute set of dies and then I'll talk about the ribbon in a sec but let's look at this adorable paper so this paper, um, you get obviously uh, 12 in a pack. That's typical of all of our designer papers. Uh, but on every sheet, you have images that coordinate with the dies. So there is our little bicycling crocodile. Um, each, each sheet has a, an image that coordinates with the dies. So there we go. These are all things that move. Okay, so roller skates and scooters and unicycles. This one is all birthdays so our cute little raccoon with the balloons can be cut out with a die okay now these images are not difficult to fussy cut which you're gonna see <laughs> um i went a little crazy fussy cutting here we have hobbies and interests so we've got a knitting llama we've got a reading bear we've got a meditating sloth uh we've got a little porcupine doing some art super cute so again our llama can be cut out with the dies and then this is my favorite, just because I'm kind of partial to music, being a music teacher, love this pattern. So we've got um, our banjo playing, I don't know, is that a warthog or maybe a, I don't know, looks like a warthog to me, maybe. Uh, we've got a flute playing frog. Now I just have to tell you my one pet peeve with this, okay? So a lot of people might think, oh, it's great that they did a mirror image uh, frogs. However, this frog is playing his flute backwards and it bugs the heck out of me. This is the way you play a flute, not like this. <laughs> As a flute player, that bugs me. Anyway, I just had to get that off my chest. Stampin' Up! didn't ask me before they made this paper. They should have, clearly. All right, so we have our cute little turtle. We've got an accordion playing bear. Bongo playing beaver. So, so sweet. And then we have our ballerinas. So cute. And this little guy here, or gal, is um, can be cut out with the dies as well. And then finally, we have our adventure pr print. So we've got hikers and uh, campfire, marshmallow roasters, bird watchers, uh, photographers, butterfly catchers, just so, so cute. So and then, of course, on the back side of the paper, we have fun, just black and white patterns. So lots of great possibilities with these, not just with this suite. Um, anytime you have black and white patterns, they're so versatile. We've got the scallops, the stars, and the zigzags. So, so many things you can do with um, black and white designer series paper. So that is our paper. And then let me just show you quickly the ribbon. So this ribbon comes in a two pack. Um, it's super actually quite soft. I was thinking this would be quite, um, it's, it's ribbed ribbon, but it's really quite soft. It ties up into a nice little bow. This is a quarter inch and this is an eighth of an inch. Okay, so we have um, two different widths ribbon. This is petal pink and lemon lime twist. Okay, so you get both of those in the pack. And now let's do some stamping. Oh, I've been ignoring people coming in. Sorry, didn't mean to ignore you guys. I was so busy talking about all of the fun products here. Let me just see who's here. Oh, Sonia's here. Hi, Judy. Hi, it's good to see your name. Um, hi, Susan from Alberta. Hi, Jill from Ohio. Oh, Tracy, you agree. All right, thank you. I'm not alone. <laughs> Jill, I am not out of school yet. Uh, we go right until the 29th. Um, we have students until Thursday of this week and then exams and then two um, PDPA days at the end. So we're not done until the 29th. So next week I will be much closer to done. I'm hoping to have my report marks done and just be kind of into final year end wrap up by the time I see you next week. All right. So let's get to it. Here is our first, I wanted to do a couple of really quick, easy projects. I am showcasing the designer series paper because honestly, it is my favorite thing about this suite. And if you can only afford to get one thing from the suite, get this paper. It is so cute and so, so versatile. Um, so this is just, well, I'm going to show you. It's super quick and easy to put together. If you have circle punches or circle dies, um, this will almost make itself this card. So, so easy. All right, so we have just a four by five and a quarter inch piece of pool party cardstock that I have embossed using one of the basics embossing folders. Now these are online exclusive items. It's a three pack of 3D embossing folders. And this is the one that's kind of, it looks to me, I think it's called depression glass on the, uh, on the website. But to me, if you turn it over, it looks like a golf ball. So that's what I think of when I see it. It, looks, it reminds me of a golf ball. 
All right, so we have three different size circles that I punched with various circle punches that I have. You can certainly use dies. Uh, the largest one is two and three eighths. Next, we have a two and a quarter, and then we have a two, okay? So just a series of circles, and you can use any patterns at all from the pack. I just decided to go with the primarily black ones for my background so that my um, images would pop, okay? So here we go. We are going to start gluing them down. So I'm gluing my largest circle sort of at the top, and then... This one's going to go down here towards the bottom, maybe in a bit. And then this one's just going to overlap a little bit here. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to maintain relatively equal borders around the edges. And my seal is running out. I do have a spare. In fact, it did just run out. I came prepared. Look at that. I have an extra. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and add some of these cute images. So these are just punched from the pattern that is all birthday celebrations. So we've got our, our um, confetti dog, we've got our banner elephant and our little koala here juggling cupcakes, which is a feat. So we are simply going to layer these um, onto our card front just with some dimensionals. Super quick and easy card. Hi Jean, you made it, welcome. Glad you could join us. All right. Yes, Laura, there are two of each pattern in the pack, which is great because you can use one sheet for your um, black and white images and then the other sheet for all your cute little critters. So you don't have to decide which ones to sacrifice. You've got both. All right. So we'll get rid of this one. Again, these are just punched using circle sizes. This one I think was one of, I should have told you the measurements. I think this is one and three quarters. This is the same as this one. So I think this one was two and a quarter and this one is two. Okay. So I just basically took my DSP and tried to see what size circles would fit my little critters in them. And that's what I used. Okay. If you don't have punches, use dies. Um, in fact, dies are probably a little bit easier because you don't have to try to, you know, reach into the DSP with your punch. Okay. So there we go. Super easy. Now we're going to layer that on a piece of basic black. This is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So that is going to get layered just like that. I am going to put my adhesive on my um, solid layer rather than the embossed one, just so that I don't accidentally pull up a layer of my cardstock. Sometimes when we use the 3D embossing folders, um, they weaken the cardstock so much because they provide such a deep impression that you can sometimes pull your cardstock apart if you have a really sticky adhesive like seal. Okay, so there we go. Um, then we're going to layer this onto a, I've got a thick basic white card base here. This is four and a quarter by 11, uh, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. And crisp that up. Oh, thanks, Jean. I'm glad you, you were able to join me and that you, you didn't miss me to the, this week. So we'll just pop this on. And center that. There we go. Now that's cute as it is, but we need a sentiment. So here I have already stamped and heat embossed in white on black cardstock using the something great to celebrate sentiment from the set. So that is gonna go on there, but first we're gonna add a little bit of white baker's twine. So I'm going to just add a glue dot to the back of my banner. I'm gonna press one end of my glue dot, or my one end of my twine into my glue dot. And then we're gonna wrap this around a couple of times. I usually like to go three. I just kind of like the look of that. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can. Do it as many or as few times as you like. And then I've again, pressed the end of the twine into that same glue dot to secure it, okay? Then we're gonna take and actually feed the end of the twine underneath our wound ribbon here and pull a little bit of length. And we're actually gonna tie our bow around the twine that's already on there. Um, it just gives a little bit different look. You've often seen me tie my bows separately and adhere them with a glue dot. Um, this is just a little bit different look. Now, here's a tip. When you're trying to tie twine onto a little bitty piece like this, it can be kind of annoying because this is such a small piece, it's a little bit hard to navigate. So rather than try to tie it with it floating around all over the place, we're actually gonna secure this to the front of our card and then tie our bow, okay? So I'm gonna add 
a, I'm actually going to use a black dimensional here, actually minis, um, because that's what they're for to go against black. And I'm, I'm adhering a black um, banner here. So it just makes sense to use my black dimensionals. If you don't have black dimensionals, white ones work. Um, but the black just kind of fade into the woodwork, especially when you're adhering them onto a black um, image or die cut. So we're going to pop this on right about there. Okay, now that that's secure, is that straight? Yeah, close enough. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and tie our bow. Once this is secure, it's much easier to tie because the, this piece kind of stays put. It doesn't float around on you. So once it's, it's secure, we can tie our little bow and adjust get our loops just the size we want. Okay, if you find your loops twist a little bit when you're adjusting, just pull your knot again and readjust. Okay, the key to making cute bows is patience. <laughs> a lot of people get frustrated when their bow doesn't turn out beautifully the first time they tie it. Um, and often there's nothing wrong with the bow. It's just a matter of having to sort of straighten it out and tease it a little bit to get what you're looking for. Okay. Now our last little touch are some adhesive backed sequins. So these are the, which ones are these? I think these are the basics or neutrals. Uh, you get four different colors. So this is sort of a pearly white and I thought it would stand out nicely against our background here. We're just going to add a few of these guys to the front of our card. One there, and we'll do one more. I don't know. We'll do one up here. There we go. Super quick and easy. Wasn't that an easy card? Like, no effort, no coloring, no nothing, just a little bit of punching and some some adhering. On the inside of this one, I did um, die cut out the little raccoon. I stamped some confetti and colored it in and then added a stamped sentiment. But super, super quick and easy card. All right, that's the, the beauty of this suite, is especially this DSP. You can do so many cute things super fast. All right, next up. I'm still looking a little cockeyed here, is this sweetheart. So I posted this earlier today. I love this little dancing hippo. Uh, maybe because she reminds me of me. I don't know, but she's so, so cute. I'm not a dancer. I shouldn't, I, maybe it's the hippo part that reminds me of me. <laughs> anyway, super cute. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to put this one together. This is where we get to see those adorable curtain dies in action. So to start, um, I have, this is the, the sort of outdoorsy pattern of the DSP on the back. It's got these cute little floral image. Um, so we are going to glue this. This is three by four inches. We're going to glue this to a piece of pool party cardstock that is three and one eighth by four and one eighth. Okay, so we're just going to glue that just like that. We'll use a bit of liquid glue to get that nicely centered. go that looks good okay and then we have our curtain so this is the cutest die I think I'll probably keep this die set forever just because of the curtains so we're going to adhere them flush with the edge of our DSP so you don't want to use liquid glue on these uh, because of the slits that are cut they're not just embossed they're actual slits that are cut in the cardstock so if you put liquid glue on these curtains, you're going to end up with a little bit of a sticky ooze coming through those those die cut slits there. Okay, so just a little word to the wise. Um, you don't want your project to be sticky. So we're going to adhere these to our DSP. So I'm just lining them up flush with the edge of the designer paper. And look at how considerate Stampin' Up! was. They cut, they made these exactly three inches tall. Like, it's like they knew that we wanted to put them on a card just like this. Um, and then we're going to add our little tie backs. Now these are the teensiest, weensiest little die cuts. And I think I may have already lost one. Doo, 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 doo. Where are you? Oh, still in the bag. We're good. We haven't lost it. They are itty bitty. Now the die, you actually cut two. Uh, the die cuts two. Um, and I have used some adhesive sheets on the back because honestly, to try to apply glue to these would be just a sticky mess. So we're just going to take in a, and peel our backing off our die or our uh, die cut here. And I'm just going to stick them down and then we're going to trim off the excess. Now, honestly, okay, I'll just admit this is how my brain works. When I first saw these little guys, I thought, oh, cute. They gave us hot dogs for the lion roasting <laughs> on the fire. I honestly thought these were hot dogs. It took me a minute to realize, no, they're not hot dogs. They're actually rope and they have texture. 
um, sort of cut into them. I'm not sure whether you can see that. They look like braided um, tiebacks that you would see in a theater. But yes, I thought for, for a minute, not for too long, but for a minute, I thought they were hot dogs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not embarrassed to admit that. Actually, I should be embarrassed because that's pretty silly. But anyway, uh, next up, we have a piece of Petal Pink cardstock. Again, four by five and a quarter. And this one I have embossed using the Cascading Ruffles embossing folder. And I can honestly say this is the first time I've actually used this folder. It has been in my stash since it came out and I have not used it. But this is the perfect use for it because it looks like curtains behind our ballerina. So I just ran it through. It is a 3D folder. It is quite lovely. I think I need to use it more. Uh, but before we glue this down, we're going to add a little bit of my fave gingham ribbon. So we're going to just add a glue dot. <laughs> Maybe, Tracy, that you actually could could be right on there. I do tend to uh, craft when I'm hungry. My I tend to forget to eat when I'm crafting. Um, I could go all day and realize, oh... Maybe I should eat. <laughs> I do drink lots, though. I got my water cup, water cup here, and I'll just take a sip now. Um, but that keeps me going, and I, I can forget to eat when I'm really going hard. All right, so now that we have our ribbon on, we are going to layer this on a piece of pool party cardstock. Um, it is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Now you certainly could die cut your curtains out of the center of this if you wanted to be frugal with your cardstock. Um, I didn't bother to do that because I have so much scrap cardstock, it's not even funny. So I just used some scrap to cut my curtains. Uh, but you certainly could cut your curtains out before you adhere this layer. Oh, see, did you see it started to pull? This happens to me when I go too fast. I started to pull my cardstock apart. All right, there we go. Let's pop this on. That'll be cool. And then we are going to add our sweet little curtains here. Our stage, I guess it really is, with the curtains and the backdrop. So again, I'm adding a little bit of seal. And we're going to center this. Right about there looks pretty good. All right, now our little hippo, I have fussy cut this out ahead of time, but we are gonna color it, color her, I guess. Um, so it comes, the DSP comes with some shading, but the hippo herself is white. So I'm going to color her in with my light smoky slate Stampin' Blends. And in case you're just joining and you missed my memo, if you are in Canada, I have a special promotion happening until Sunday night, till my birthday. It's my Anna birthday promotion, um, where for every $60 you spend, you get to choose a free pack of Stampin' Blends. So Smoky Slate is a great choice. I feel like this thing is not bright enough. I don't know. It looks dim to me today. Maybe it's because I've been out in the sunlight. The light doesn't seem very bright today. Um, so yeah, Smoky Slate is a fantastic neutral. Um, it's probably my most used um, gray. I'm starting to use gray granite more because I like the way it works with Pebbled Path and I've been using that a lot. But you get to choose whatever shade you would like of Stampin' Blends um, with, your, with every $60 you spend, obviously here in Canada. Um, I can't help you out if you are in the US, unfortunately. Um, but if you would like to place an order, you can either um, visit my online store and the host code will be posted in this video description after I'm done um, to place your order or you could email me directly and I will place your order for you. Now my best advice though is to wait till tomorrow because you can get free shipping on your order too. So there you go. All right let's just finish coloring our little hippo hippo here. I'm not doing any shading. That's mainly because there's not a ton of shading on the printed image. So I'm just kind of doing it kind of cartoony looking, um, just some flat color. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my petal pink Stampin' Blends. I'm going to give her a little bit of a blush on her cheek. Just a little, little blush there. And it's going to color the nostrils a, just a little bit there. Okay. Isn't she sweet? Love this little hippo. So we're going to pop her up on the front of her card as soon as I find my dimensionals. So let's just add a couple here. And she is going to take center stage. Hi, 
Brenda. Welcome. Hi, Peggy. You made it. All right. So we're going to put her on there and make sure her foot is touching the stage. Or maybe she's, maybe she's doing a jump. Who knows? Uh, I like my images to be anchored, not floating. So that's just a personal preference. Um, now, before we do any more, we're going to go ahead and adhere this to our card base. So this again is thick basic white. Five and a half by eight and a half this time, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Um, I tend to make more tent fold cards than book, ones that open like a tent rather than book. I don't know why that is. It's just a personal preference. Um, I feel like they, they're easier to stand up. They tend to not fall over as easily. Um, that's just a personal preference. You could certainly make this um, the opposite way if you wanted to. You could make it as a, as a book fold. Um, but I like tents. So there we go. Okay. Now let's finish this off. We have a little label here. This is cut using the nested essentials dies. This is a new set of dies. If you miss them, they're in the annual catalog. Um, you get three different shapes of different sizes that nest, hence the name nested essentials and these sort of rounded corner rectangles. This is the smallest die in the set and it happens to fit our sentiment just perfectly. So we are going to stamp your two wonderful in just some memento black on our little label here. There we go. And then I've die cut some of these cute little flowers that are also included in the die set. So we're just going to add a little smidge of liquid glue to a couple of the petals and just tack that on to the edge of our label here just to decorate it. So I'll put one here and then we're going to tuck one sort of coming on from behind. So we'll add a glue dot for that one. One there. We'll just kind of tack that on there. Okay. Just like that. And then that is going to get popped up on the front of our card. So we'll add a couple of dimensionals again and get rid of our backings. And then we're going to pop that on just in that upper corner of the stage just like that okay and then I wanted to add some centers for my flowers so we're going to add some iridescent pearls um so there are three sizes to these are there three I guess there's only two I don't know to me they look like three but I guess there's only two and they just happen to fit the smaller ones happen to fit quite nicely inside the centers of these little flowers so we're going to add a little pearl to each flower. Now this one's a little tricky because it's popped and then we'll add one to her flower on her tutu. There we go. So cute. And then our last touch is a cute little bow. So we are going to tie a sweet little bow with our gingham ribbon. Here we go. Let's just adjust our loops here. I, I'm going to cry when this gingham, I know it's eventually going to retire, but honestly it's the best ribbon. <laughs> It ties so nicely and goes with so many things. So it's going to go right by our leftmost curtain here. So we'll just get rid of or grab a glue dot here and pop it on. There we go. Isn't that cute? All right. Now on the inside of my sample, I added another strip of this paper and I actually, I'm not sure how well it'll show on the camera, but I did color my flowers using the light pool party stamp and blends just so that it kind of echoed her skirt. And there we go. Number two done. All right, so number three is a fun fold. So let me pull it in here. Clean up my mess a little bit. So I posted this one yesterday and I had so much fun. This is what I, I honestly have to say, I have to hold myself back when I'm making cards with this suite because there's so many fun possibilities with it. By the time I'm done, I have used like every die in the set and five different patterns of DSP and it ends up being like a mega project. So this is one of those ones where... I can only do one of these in a video because they're, they're a little bit involved, but not hard. So let me just show you how it opens up. So it lies flat, just a standard uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. Um, but it opens up to be a little shadow box. So we have our stage with our little crooning turtle, uh, but it's a Z fold. So the cool thing about that is that it stands up. I'm not sure how well that'll show on the camera, but it stands up. Um, so you can actually see the full sort of panorama of the inside panel there. 
okay? So it's not hard to make. I'm going to show you the scoring and everything and show you how to put it together. Uh, but so many possibilities with this little die cut. You could do so many different scenes um, in this. And you could even probably, I don't know, I haven't tried it. You could probably turn it as a, um, a landscape orientation as well. So let me show you how to put this one together. So to start, this starts out as a five and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock. Okay, so five and a half by 11. So almost a full sheet. Okay, then you're going to do some scoring. So you're going to put your um, paper in. Ignore the fact this is die cut. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so pretend it's a solid sheet of cardstock. And you're going to put it in landscape. And you're going to score at a half inch, four inches, four and a half, eight eight and a half and nine and three quarters. Okay. I will put all of these measurements. Look, I even have them here. I have my cheat sheet. I will put them all up in the video description when I'm done. Okay. All right. So that is our base. Then I'm going to flip this around so that our narrow little half inch um, strip, that first score line is on the right. And that panel is the one that you're going to die cut your opening. Okay. So I use the deckled rectangle dies. You could use stitch rectangles. I just use the deckled ones because they're current. Stitch ones are tired. Yes, I still haven't gotten over that one. Uh, I miss those dies a lot. But the deckled rectangles are a good substitution. This is the, I think, fourth... <coughs> Excuse me. Need a sip of water. <clears throat> I think this is the fourth smallest die. It measures. Let me just tell you the measurement of it. It is two and a half by four, okay? So if you're looking at for a, a rectangle, you don't want anything much wider than two and a half uh, just because it's gonna interfere with constructing your shadow box, okay? So that's really all there is to it. Now it's a matter of folding all our score lines. So I'm gonna start by folding this first half inch one. We'll crisp that up really well with our bone folder. And then we're just going to kind of work our way across. So then I'm going to come into my four inch score line and then my four and a half. So as you're folding, you just want to make sure you get some really nice crisp folds, really burnish them well. Okay. You can see that's forming our box. And then next one, we're just basically folding everything inward until the very last one. Okay, just see how that goes. There's our shadow box. Okay, now this next one, sorry, last two. Second last one is gonna go outwards. We're making a mountain. And then the last one is gonna come inwards. Okay, so essentially what's gonna happen is we're going to adhere this little flap to there. And that is going to give us our, oh, did I do that wrong? This way, this does have to go back. I was not, I was not lying. They both go backwards. There we go. So that is going to give us our Z fold. It's going to close like that. Okay. All right. So next up, before we do any gluing, we need to decorate the inside of our opening on our shadow box. Okay. So we are going to start, let me just grab all my bits and pieces here. There are quite a few. We're going to start with our balance that goes across the top of our, our stage here. So this started out as a two by, what is it, three? Two by three and a quarter inch piece of Orchid, Orchid Oasis um, cardstock. And I die cut it using the scallop die that's in the die set. Okay. All right. So we are going to go ahead and glue this. And I'm going to glue it so that it is pretty much flush with the top edge, maybe down just a smidge because I want to make sure it's not visible when I um, open my card, but it's going to go right about there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of liquid glue all the way around, not all the way around, but sort of in that general area of my shadow box. So we're going to pop that on right about there. And you can have a look at it. Yep, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit higher. Doesn't matter too, too much. Depends how much balance you want to see. Okay. All right. Next, we have our curtains. So again, from the front, we want these to be visible like that. Oh, you know what? It needed to go a little bit lower because my curtains are going to be too short. Let's just pull that down just a smidge. Just a smidge. Come on. Come here. Good thing liquid, I use liquid glue, girls. <laughs> 
Hadn't set up yet, so we're gonna add a little bit more here and I'm gonna put it just a bit lower than I had it. There we go. You just wanna make sure that your curtains, the top of your curtain is gonna catch your balance. That's what my issue is. Okay, so now we are going to glue these on. Again, we're looking at the back side. So the good side is gonna be down and they're gonna get glued on either side of our stage there. Okay, so again, a little bit of liquid glue right along the edge and a little bit across the top. And then we just pop our curtain on. Oops, the glue is a little low there. We'll add a little bit more. A little more, a little lower. Put a couple little dabs on the balance. There we go. Okay, and then same thing on the other side. A little liquid glue along the sides. A little along the bottom and a couple of dabs at the top. And we'll add our second curtain. There we go. And you just want to give this a second to set up because it is going to help give strength to our shadow box. Okay, that's going to kind of reinforce it. Okay, just kind of gives it a little bit more strength. All right, next we need our backdrop. So for that, I use some of the star patterned DSP. This is the one that has the birthday celebrants on the front. And that is going to get glued to that back panel that is going to be the inside of our shadow box like that. Okay, now this is cut to three by five, three by four and three quarters. Okay, so that's gonna go on right there. So we'll go ahead and stick that down. Pop that guy on, pretty much centered. There we go. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and adhere our shadow box. So this, as I said, is going to get glued just like that, okay? So the easiest way to glue this is to actually fold this flat. We're gonna put our glue along here. This is that narrow little half inch um, tab there. And then we're just gonna fold this over top to adhere it, okay? So that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm just gonna burnish this a little bit more because it's not lying quite as flat as I would like it to. And we're gonna go ahead and, and glue. Now you wanna use strong glue for this. Liquid glue works quite nicely. You could use um, Seal Plus, you could use Tear and Tape, uh, but you want something that's gonna be nice and strong. So I'm just folding this over and burnishing that and giving it a chance for the glue to set up. Okay, and then when I stand it up, there's my little shadow box. Isn't that fun? Okay, now I'm just gonna fold this over and burnish it a bit too, just to make sure that's nice and square. All right, there we go. All right, now let's put our little turtle on our stage. So here he is, our little crooning turtle. So this again, I just die cut from the DSP. Um, I did add a little bit more color. So I colored his body and the rest of his shell and the, the microphone, um, but so, so fun. And I'm going to, again, use my black dimensionals to stick this guy on because he's going against a black background and the card base is black. So again, just in the interest of the dimensionals not showing up. So we're gonna glue him right about there. There he is, center stage. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of a panel here because this panel will be visible when we open our card. So this again, same pattern of DSP. Um, this one is cut to one by five and a quarter. Five and a quarter? Yes, one by five and a quarter. So that is going to get glued just inside our Z folds. So we'll add a little bit of glue here and pop that on just like that. Make sure it's straight. Okay, now we need to add our front panel. So our front panel is actually just a quarter sheet of cardstock. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. And what's going to happen is we're going to fold this over. We're going to put glue right here, just on this panel. And then we are going to center that. I'm gonna put it on upside down. You're going to find that the top and bottom are flush and you're going to have, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch border on side to side. Okay, so it's gonna get glued just like that. Okay, so when you see the closed card, you see how that looks? All right, so we're going to glue that little, that just glue here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue. Again, you wanna use strong glue for this. And I'm actually gonna turn this sideways just because I find it easier to get it 
lined up and straight. So we're just gonna take our time and get this nice and straight. Make sure your sides, top and bottom are flush. And again, we're just gonna give this a minute to stick. Okay, and then when I flip it over, I have my Z fold. Okay, just see how that, I'm not gonna pull too hard because that glue hasn't set up yet, but you get the idea. Okay, all right, now it's time to decorate. So for the front of my card, I have a piece of Orchid Oasis cardstock. I think this is four by five and a quarter. Yes, it is. And then I have another piece of the Zucru DSP, this fun black and white scallop. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. So that is going to get centered on my Orchid Oasis. So we'll go ahead and stick that down. Yeah, it, it's actually way easier than it looks, Kathy. Um, it looks like a really complex card, but it's really, really not. It's a really kind of neat way to put it together um, that makes sure you get everything nice and straight. Okay, so we have that on. I'm going to add another deckled rectangle. This is the next size down from the one that I used to cut out my opening for my shadow box, okay? Uh, this is just white cardstock, and again, embossed with one of the basic 3D embossing folders, one of the online exclusives. This is that sort of crosshatch pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to the front of our card or front of our panel I guess it's not on the card yet it will be soon there we go okay and now I have my cute little elephant here now I should mention let me see if I can grab that pattern in the DSP because um the DSP comes with a certain color scheme okay do you see that so I didn't want the pink. I wanted this to be more like a masculine focus card and I wanted more intense color. So all I did is I darkened down this first little flag on my banner with my dark Daffodil Delight stamp of lens. And then the pink I colored with my dark Orchid Oasis. Okay, and that gave me a little bit more masculine color palette. And then of course I colored my elephant with my gray granite stamp and lens. So we're gonna go ahead and pop him up. This time I am going to use white dimensionals as soon as I find what I did with them because it's going on a white background. So we'll just go ahead and add a couple to the back of our elephant here. And we're going to pop that on. So these are just fussy cuts, all of these little critters. Um, they are not hard to fussy cut. Um, you just need a little patience. And Patience works wonders, right? So here is that cute little banner die from the die set. I cut it out of Orchid Oasis cardstock. I'm gonna rotate it um, so that it's landscape and we're gonna stamp. You're too wonderful in black ink. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And then I've got some Orchid Oasis Baker's Twine. So I'm gonna tie a little double bow here. So I'm just gonna double up my twine and tie myself a cute little bow. Okay, not so cute initially, but again, once we tease it and play with it a little bit, and the big thing about making double bows is you want one of the loops on the bow to be a little bit smaller than the other um, when you're doubling them up. And that emphasizes the fact that it is a double bow. So then we'll trim off our tails. And then that is just gonna get glue dotted to the upper left corner of our banner here. Find me a glue dot. And we'll pop that on just in the corner like that. And then that is going to get popped up on the front of my card. So I'm gonna line up the edge of my banner with the edge of my DSP so that it overlaps my little white panel there. And that just kind of pulls the design together. So if you are finding you're having a hard time making your designs look sort of cohesive, um, sometimes it's just because the elements are not touching. So one of the um, key secrets, I guess, to design is making sure your elements are all touching. Um, they're touching each other. They don't all have to be touching, the, all, not all elements have to be touching all the others, but they need to be touching each other, something else on the card, and that kind of pulls it together. I hope that makes sense. I didn't explain that very well. All right, so we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our card front, okay? So I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue here, just so I have some wiggle time to get it exactly where I want it. So we'll pop this on, just making sure I'm right set up because that, <laughs> how many of you have glued a card front on upside down before? Come on, confess. 
It's happened to me more times than I care to count. All right, so there we go. All right, now we're gonna add a couple of little, actually we'll do that later. Let's stamp our inside panel. So we need a spot to write our greeting. And the cool thing about this is you can actually squish the card right flat to write. So you don't have to worry about the shadow box and the fact that you know it's kind of awkward to write. This will squish right flat for you to write in, okay? So we're gonna stamp our sentiment on this white panel. Uh, this is two and a quarter by five and a quarter, okay? And it is going to get glued inside our card right there okay so we're going to add our little raccoon our little balloon carrying raccoon so we're going to add a little bit of memento black because we're going to color him in so we're using the memento because he's going to get colored okay and then we're going to stamp something great to celebrate as well so we'll just add that Hopefully relatively straight. I have no idea. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> I can't tell when I'm not looking straight down on it. And then we're going, actually, you know what? I'm going to wait to color this guy it, just in the interest of time. I will color him later. Um, I will tell you, I used Pebbled Path to color the body. Um, I used, that's light pebbled path, the dark pebbled path for the mask and the stripes on the tail. And then the, the tummy and sort of the face um, are light gray granite. Okay, so those are the colors I use for my raccoon. Balloons, um, Orchid Oasis, Lemon Lime Twist, and Daffodil Delight. Okay, but I'm not going to take the time to color them right now, just in the interest of time. So we'll just pop this in, and I will come back and color them later. There we go. All right, and then our last touch is to stamp our happy birthday sentiment. So I've just got a scrap of white cardstock here. We're gonna stamp that, and then we're just gonna fussy cut out the words. So it's really just a matter of cutting straight lines to cut this little sentiment out. So I start by just cutting straight across, and then, nope, that's a scrap. Where's my happy? There we go, and then we're just gonna cut straight up. Super quick and easy to fussy cut these little sentiments because they're kind of a cartoony um, font. So they're really, really easy and square to cut. So there's birthday. And then we're gonna cut two and you as separate words. So again, we'll cut off that excess on the bottom and then trim these little guys. There we go. And then those are gonna get popped onto the front of our curtain here, onto the valance. So what I'm going to do is just add little bits of glue. So that's gonna be happy. I'm gonna use my blue goo end of my take your pick. And the best thing about this is you can put them crooked and it still looks cute. <laughs> Gotta love it when you are, you can do purposely crooked. So there's happy, there's birthday, a little bit of glue for two. And a little bit of glue for you. Come on. There we go. Come here. Your take your pick is your best friend for finagle these, these little little bitty pieces. Okay. Don't try to pick them up with your fingernail. It won't work. <laughs> won't work well anyway. All right. So there we go. There is our inside. Now the last little touch on the front is to add some bling. So we're gonna add some of these sparkle gems in black. Um, they come in two sizes. We've got small and large. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna mix up the sizes here a little bit, large and small. There we go, a little bit of bling for the front of our card. And we're done. You like that one? So these little shadow box cards, not hard to make at all. The scoring is the key, getting the scoring right at the beginning. Um, and then it's just a matter of folding. Okay. So there we go. That one's done. Here we go. There's our little ballerina. There's our super quick and easy. Okay. Now let me show you. These are not quick and easy. These ones, these are ones I went a little overboard with. I'm going to start with this one. This is one I actually considered for a minute showing you how to make, but it's way too much. So look at this fun little band. <laughs> I couldn't resist being a music teacher. Um, I had to make myself a little band. So this is a 
um, triple easel card. It's a slim line, so these guys unfold and it folds flat to go in a slim line envelope. It actually fits just in a regular business size envelope, um, but super fun. Love this little, little, little guy. And then this one is actually going to go up on my, um, it's going to be posted tomorrow on my Instagram to celebrate the first day of summer. So all of my favorite summer activities, well, maybe not bird watching, but hiking and uh, roasting marshmallows by a campfire for sure are up there. And then here are some fun swap cards that I received. So this is another fun fold. This is a center split card like that. This is one that I received from a European demonstrator. So it's um, a European sized card, but love the knitting llamas. Here is again, another odd size card. This is almost a slim line, but not quite the, as long as a slim line, but love all of the fun, um, bright and beautiful DSP patterns on that one. And then there's our sweet little raccoon again. Here's a book fold, a little crocodile. Here we have our ballerina leopard. And then again, our knitting llama. So, so many fun possibilities with this suite. They're just, oh, so much fun. I had to stop myself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these projects. I hope you have fun with this DSP. Grab it while it's on sale and better yet, grab yourself some free stamp and blends and free shipping tomorrow. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a fantastic uh, rest of your week and I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.